One major post-event activity that's often overlooked is the evaluation of hosts and the effectiveness of them to do their job. This video will address the four levels of effectiveness and how to improve performance and event success. So grab your pen and paper or laptop. You're not going to want to miss a minute of this. over seven years ago, I was asked to do the appeal at a fundraising event for a nonprofit organization in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The group worked extremely hard to recruit table hosts and guests. There were more than 500 in attendance that year. As I normally do, I got up immediately following the main speaker to make the second and final portion of the appeal and instruct the table hosts to find their packets and pass out the little envelopes inside, making sure that every guest had an envelope. And as I always do, I said, I know you may be tempted to begin filling out your envelope, but if you can, please wait until I've clearly explained everything so there's no confusion. With that, I glanced down at a table in front of me. It was made up of older guests, and I noticed that the host had already passed out the envelopes. But worse than that, I realized that everyone had already completed their envelope and were beginning to turn those envelopes into the host. Well, that's always problematic because not only were they not going to listen to my explanation of how to complete the card completely, but that they had already made up their minds as to how much they would give without hearing my challenge to consider giving above and beyond and why. This newfound knowledge was not only distracting as I was completing my instructions, but also very disappointing. After the event ended, I immediately made a beeline to the host to ask a few questions, starting with, Say, I noticed that your guests all had their envelopes completed before I started going through them. Would you know why? To which the host said very sternly, because I told them to complete it as soon as they arrived and even told them how much to give. Wow. Once I got beyond the shock of that statement, I thanked her and proceeded to head to the counting room to see what they gave. Sure enough, each check was the same amount and each was way under the anticipated minimum. Actually, less than the cost of each person's meal. Every successful event includes a post-evaluation of an individual host's effectiveness. Hosts tend to fall into four categories of effectiveness listed from worst to best. Type number four, hosts don't give and their guests don't give. For any nonprofit leader, especially a dinner coordinator, this would be considered a nightmare situation. You work so hard to recruit and train hosts, and somehow the message just didn't come through that even though no one is obligated to give, it's a strong desire that everyone gives something that night, and hopefully it will be a sacrificial gift. For whatever reason, this type of host doesn't ask the qualifying question addressed in my video above how to recruit event hosts, or they simply ignored the process since they were so desperate to fill their table or to please the person who asked them to host. For the other three types, there will be viable solutions to either improve the performance of the host or turn around a difficult situation. With this type of host, I find this is probably the wrong person to ask to be a host. You can have a discussion with them as to why they felt this happened, why no one at your table gave, but in all likelihood, the only solution is to not ask this person to host again. They'll feel better and so will you. Type number three, hosts give, but the guests don't give. This type of host seems to have missed a critical part of the pre-qualifying message. The host gave a gift, which is great, but their guests did not give and a reason for that must be determined. A conversation with the host will most likely unearth the following result, that the host believed that their gift would cover the cost of the guest meals, thus incorporating the same thinking that torpedoes the buy a table dinner strategy. The incentive to find good qualified hosts is lost. In some instances, you'll find that the hosts even tell the guests, oh, don't worry about giving. I got you covered. Completely defeating one of the main purposes in the event, finding new friends of the organization. If the conversation finds a host with a humble and contrite heart and one who generally realizes they made a mistake, then that person should be given a second opportunity to recruit better guests. If the second year this host has the exact same results, this host should not be used again and the person should simply be asked to attend as a guest but not as a host. Type number two, guests give but hosts don't give. 
Believe it or not, I'm okay with this type of host. Some people are networkers, they know everyone, but they don't have the capacity to give or give a large amount themselves. If I was given the choice of a host giving one large gift or many guests giving an amount that equals that one large gift, I'd choose the many gifts, giving me an opportunity to increase the performance of many later. I can live with this type of person being a host every year. I like people who are willing to invite their giving friends to my event. If you feel strongly about the host giving, I get that. A discussion with them about modeling or being an example for others could occur. But frankly, I wouldn't push it if they are bringing guests who give large amounts and bring guests every year. Type number one, host give and the guests give. This is the brass ring, the holy grail. These are near perfect hosts. The only possible drawback might be is if the level of giving is small from everyone. But if the combined giving of that table is 2,000 or 3,000 or more, that's terrific. If the level of giving is under 2,000, then I might see if the host would work to increase the giving of the table. I would never reveal the giving of others, even to the host who brought them. But I believe it's fine to share the amount given at the table combined so that the host can help increase that amount. The key takeaway from this video should be that you need to evaluate each table host immediately after the dinner or at a minimum before you invite individuals to be a host at your next event. Evaluating every host every dinner is essential to success and using these four categories are very helpful. Type number one and two should be kept, lauded, loved, and challenged again next year. Type number three host needs to be cultivated to improve their performance. This must include a conversation with the host, a frank conversation about what needs to happen to be a host again the following year. For the reasons mentioned earlier, they are not inviting the right guests and that needs to be addressed. A type four host in all likelihood needs to either be thanked for their help and told they don't need to worry about being a host again or simply not asked again. But a conversation should happen even though it's difficult and closure should take place. I've had type four hosts who uh, I've not asked to be a host again and somehow they found out about the dinner and started once again asking the wrong people to sit at a table. I learned that it's better for them to understand your concerns, see closure, and get hosts to agree that it's best if they not be a host again in the future, but that you'd love for them to attend as a guest at the table of another host. An annual evaluation of table hosts will ensure that you don't keep doing the same thing over and over again using poor table hosts expecting different results. That, of course, is the definition of insanity. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which concepts you like best or wanted to start first. And if I missed anything valuable that you learned, share that with me in the comments so that it can get help out to the entire community. It might be important for you to know that 70% of those who watch this channel regularly have never subscribed to this channel. Wow, that was a revelation to me. There's no cost to you but the more subscribers we have, the more the message gets out to others and the more we can all share the wealth derived from collective experiences. Simply hit the big red subscribe button and click the all bell to no be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.